surprise. Wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. So before the week started, the NFL week, I guess that was week 13, I had talked to Shannon about this, and I was like, yo, we got something going on that is surprising in the NFL these days, which is there was a good game at every time slot on the schedule, right? At least the very least a game that was worth considering. Well, okay, maybe after you got past Thursday. Anyway, we wound up with, we had what, the Vikings and the Falcons in the early game. We had the Panthers and the Saints in the middle game. Uh, We had that Sunday night game, the Eagles and the Seahawks. And, you know, those all turned out to be pretty good games. And then we wound up with the Steelers and the Bengals to close it out. And I'm like, you know, it's a titanic clash of AFC North foes, right? Like, yeah, yeah, they always got beef in that division. Let's see how this goes. And I forgot, man, they, they always got beef. Like, what we saw last night, I felt like, was basically what happened when you have two teams that really, really, really do not like each other. It feels like a cliche to kind of throw out there, but no, 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 no. These teams really, really, really don't like each other. You also have to remember that they had that game in the playoffs where all all the Bengals' questionable cases melted down in one way or another at the end. Jeremy Hill fumbled. Uh, Vontez Burfitt gave Antonio Brown that concussion. And then Pac-Man Jones wound up getting into it with Joey Porter. Like, the whole thing came apart for the Bengals' whole. Uh, discount bin strategy of building a roster. It all went in that way. Anyway, um, last night, the Steelers wound up coming out the game with that dub, but Juju Smith-Schuster put a lick on Vontez Burfick that is one of those licks that we typically think of Vontez Burfick putting on somebody else, except for the fact that I didn't really see anything wrong with the block that Juju put on Vontez Burfick. Antonio Brown had the ball. He's cutting it over to the to the sideline on the right. Vontez Burfick was there in a position to make something happen. Like, I can't say he was going to hit Antonio Brown, but I looked at it, and he seemed like a guy that somebody should probably try to block. And the homie Juju was like, I'll go try to block him. And Juju leveled him. Absolutely knocked his block. Shannon, uh, is the man Burfick in the, what they call it, the protocol? Because that looked like a protocolian sort of hit. We don't know. I just saw my man laid out on the ground. Like, that was it. I just saw him laid out on the ground. And Juju Smith-Schuster got suspended a game for that. Georgia Loca, a safety for the um, Bengals, he also got suspended a game for a hit that he put on Antonio Brown that looked more in line with the suspension, I thought, than the hit that Juju took. But I did think the one on Loca, I mean, he reared back and caught him. And what the NFL has on some of these is something that I find to be interesting. Like, I can see the argument that you make that Schuster did not have to hit Burfick as hard as he hit him, except for I thought this was a game that was largely based around hitting people as hard as you could. The Aloka hit, oh, no. Like, that is one straight out of the manual of things they don't want you to do anymore. Like, that one is right there, and he caught him right in the dome. And I was like, okay, I can see I'm not terribly surprised that somebody wound up getting suspended for that one. But at the same time, if you're a loca and you're in that position and you can't do anything to stop the dude from catching the ball, I feel like the only option you have is to make the dude drop the ball. And so what we do have in part with these player safety initiatives, and I understand the need for them, but what we do have in part is you're telling defensive players, you're just going to have to give up seven points if you don't want to get suspended. And I'm not sure how many of those guys are really going to be willing to make that trade. There are some hits that some guys are going to manage to walk back, right? There are going to be some hits that some dudes have a chance to deliver, and then they're going to stop. That's going to happen. But I don't feel like that's one that they're ever going to be able to prevent. Like, ain't nobody going to lose their job, like, as Vontez Burfitt. Ain't nobody about to lose their job getting suspended for hitting people too hard. You will lose your job for giving up touchdowns. 
And I do feel like a whole lot of what NFL players do when they're out there on the field is about not losing their jobs. Now, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster, who has become a bit of a darling for all of us because he had the whole thing with his bike and he does the funny dances, hit him with the harukin, but he don't know it was a harukin because he's too young and he thinks it's Dragon Ball Z, but that was harukin, right? Shannon, tell him, wasn't that a harukin? Absolutely. I thought it was Ken and Ryu. Forget That's the right. Dragon Ball Z stuff. No, you didn't think it was Ken and Ryu. It was Ken and Ryu. He thought that it was Dragon Ball Z. But like any good old head, we're going to tell these youngsters what it is that they're really doing. Anyway, um, here is Juju Smith-Schuster. He's going to apologize for the hit on Burfick. And the guy in the background, uh, that's Antonio Brown. I didn't know it was uh, Burfick at first. Uh, all I saw was, a, you know, the first Bengals dude that was in the tackle later on. So in my instinct, you know, I got a block for my, my teammate. And me just playing ball, um, you know, I hit him. Uh, after I seen the replay, I think I, think I should have held back a little bit more uh, and just, you know, from blocking him. Hey, and, sure, I got straight uh, cash on him. Also, I also believe that that's not me. You know, it's I should never stood over him. I apologize for that. And it's called with that, karma. With that, with that being said, um, I hope karma. he gets better. First of all, let's take a moment to appreciate Juju Smith-Schuster more mature than Antonio Brown. Number two, um, I think that is also a lesson for anybody out there. If you are doing an interview and Antonio Brown is around, Antonio Brown is doing an interview also. Like, I'm glad Juju Smith-Schuster wasn't out there trying to get no shine because Antonio Brown's like, shine, don't nobody shine but me. Even if I'm talking about karma, don't nobody shine but me. Um, number three, it is very interesting to hear a player say, yeah, maybe I just shouldn't have hit him so hard. Like, is that what we do now? I mean, I understand the rationale behind it if that's just what we do now, but is that what we do now? Are we asking guys to be like, you know, I could have hit him real hard, but instead I chilled. Is, is that is that where we are going with this? I am not really sure. Now, the other part of this that becomes interesting um, is that it's Vontez Perfect, and no one has any sympathy for Vontez Perfect at all. Like this, is, And I don't blame anybody for not having sympathy for Vontez Perfect. Like, the Bengals made a decision with Vontez Perfect. This dude only really knows one way, how to, one way to play, and the only way he knows how to play is recklessly. That's all he's got. All he knows how to do is to play recklessly, and they've made the decision that they'll make the trade for some reckless play because if you see what happens in the defense, when he's not there, these are the trades that they wind up making. But there is not a single offensive player in the league except for maybe, maybe some who play for the Bengals who was sad to see Vontez Burfick laid out on the ground as they saw him. No, no. Like Antonio Brown doing that karma thing, one could argue that that's in a bit of poor taste, but I don't think there will be very many of Vontez Burfick's peers who feel the same way. Anyway, uh, Smith Schuster has been suspended for a game for that hit that he put on Antonio Brown. If I had to guess, that's going to be a suspension that winds up being overturned. Because I I am with, there with people who are uncomfortable with the idea that that hit from Juju Smith Schuster gets the same suspension as Rob Gronkowski hitting somebody who was laid out on the ground and then giving that person a concussion when that play was over and Smith Schuster really was making what most of us would term as a football play. The block didn't look illegal. Now, the standing over him part, that probably wasn't the best move for him to make, though I think he was just trying to show out for his homeboys because he was new there, and then he wound up, you know, taking out the dude that everybody who already played for them had to despise. He already did that. But that didn't look like a suspension. And it definitely did not look as bad as what Gronk did. Like, if that is a one-game suspension, if they uphold that for Juju, I feel like they're going to go back on Gronk and be like, good news, bad news, homie. They're going to hit him like they did Pistorius down there in South, America, South Africa. Oh, yeah. Um, we're actually going to give you more time. Oh, here we go, Shannon. Some dork. I don't know what he called himself. Dragon Ball Z was out before Street Fighter in the 80s. Okay, fine, fine, cool. Was it a thing when you was a kid, Shannon? Because it wasn't a thing when I was a kid. I'm sure Juju Smith wasn't watching Dragon Ball Z in the 80s. No, he was not. I will say this. There's only two people in my mentions that's out here riding for Dragon Ball Z, and both of y'all. Off guard and Phil look like a pair of herbs. Although, Shannon, to be fair, I'm not sure this Phil guy looks like a herb. He actually just kind of looks like he might be a kappa. Really? So we're going there, huh? I'm not saying that looking uh-huh. like a kappa right. makes you look like a herb. Yeah. I'm just saying I'm looking at him in the tuxedo picture with uh-huh. the red vest and the red tie. Gotcha. And I saw an element of herb, but to be fair, mm-hmm. it may yeah. have been kappa, which is not the same thing as looking like a her- Actually, no. Gotcha. He ain't got no stuff in his hair. <laughs> There's no stuff in his hair. There doesn't, there doesn't appear to be anything else right there. But the other dude, I smell herb. Karma. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Sorry, off guard. I'm, actually, I'm not sure. I can't definitively say you're a herp. Except you just came out here riding for Dragon Ball Z. Coming up next, Florida State has a new head coach. We'll tell you who it is on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. I'll guess, excuse me, we are presented by Progressive Insurance. Jeff Goodman of ESPN will join us next segment. Jeff Goodman will join us at 430 Eastern. Find out what's going on with Leangelo Ball. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. And yep, it's Top Straight Talk. Brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Best phones, best networks, no contract. By the way, I tried to give the off-guard dude some credit that maybe he wasn't a herb. We talked, we were talking about Street Fighter and Dragon Ball Z last time, and I figured if you was the one to pop up, Dragon Ball Z came before Street Fighter. You was probably a herb because I'm of a generation that ain't care nothing about no Dragon Ball Z, but the younger generation does care about the Dragon Ball Z. Anyway, I remember I tried to pull it back because I was like, maybe the dude isn't a herb. Maybe he's not a herb. And then he says, Juju just put Burfick in protocol. You think he cares about an old head telling him what his celebration was? What's your point? Herb. Herb. Thanks for solidifying that. Like, it ain't every day that I'm not sure of myself, but I was really in a moment right there where I wasn't sure of myself. And then he was like, no, Bomani, you were right in the first time. Herb. And the answer was, of course, I was right. That's what I do. Anyway, uh, we just got some news here that uh, Willie Taggart is now going to be the head coach at Florida State. Uh, this is Taggart confirmed this to ESPN. Taggart has, all right, so Willie Taggart has done something very interesting, and I'm going to be curious to see how this goes now that he's at a job where you stay. Because what Taggart has done at just about every job he's had is stay long enough to clean up and then roll out to something better, which is not, I mean, he's not the only person who does that, but we have not seen somebody, we have not seen him stay somewhere and build it. So he went to Western Kentucky where he played under Jack Harbaugh. Remember, this is, Taggart is absolutely a Harbaugh guy and loudly claims himself to be a Harbaugh guy. Multiple generations of Harbaugh's, by the way. Worked, I mean, he played for Jack Harbaugh at Western Kentucky. He, uh, I think Jim Harbaugh recruited him to go to Western Kentucky. Like, he is a Harbaugh guy. He sees himself as a Harbaugh guy in a way that David Shaw does not see himself as a Harbaugh guy. Anyway, he goes to West Kentucky. They have their turnaround year. He got that cracking. Boom. Paul laid that into South Florida job. It was rough sledding early for him in South Florida. Got into that 10-2 and two season. Boom. Took that to Oregon. Got to Oregon where they were pretty booty last year. Boom. Got him to 75, and that's with the backup quarterback. Now, you don't stick around, baby. Somebody wants to give you a chance to go somewhere better. Boom. You take it to Florida State, and now he's there. We don't know how much money they paid him to go there, but we know Oregon offered, offered him 20 mil over five years to stay. But if you got Oregon and you got Florida State as your options, man, you go to Florida State. You absolutely do. We've seen Oregon do it. We've seen Oregon do it a little bit. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to act like we've never seen anybody win at Oregon. The one thing that worries me, though, is Chip was ahead of the game on a lot of the stuff that he did at Oregon, and I feel like the game in a lot of ways then caught up with him. So what's the next thing that can take Oregon to that level? You can get players to come to Oregon because they got a lot of money to spend to use on recruiting and facilities and everything else, but by and large, you're still asking those players to come from a long way away to go live somewhere. I mean, I don't know how much they like getting fresh Jays, but that's really got to be the thing that you sell it. Shannon, imagine that. You get recruited to go to Oregon, and you're like, but I don't really like Jays. Would you? Is that even worth going then? There's actually somebody that would say that? Well, I guess there is that. There is, I wish Oregon would recruit me right now. Now that you mentioned it, I, I go to Oregon for some J's. I'm down. I appreciate that. Oh, Shannon Offgar said he's far from Herb, Bo. Don't be mad because you got corrected. No, you're a Herb because you really care that much about Dragon Ball Z. That's why you're a Herb, right? Not to, no- mention, not to mention we had somebody, uh, one of our listeners, say that for what it's worth, Dragon Ball Street Fighter was brought to the U.S. before Dragon Ball was. So, yes, yes. And on top of it, let's be real about this with Street Fighter. We don't care about Street Fighter 1. We care about Street Fighter 2. Street Fighter 1 was a game. Street Fighter 2 was a phenomenon. Like everything we talk about in the Street Fighter world, Street Fighter 2. That's who we are. That's where we are. It's Dragon Ball Z. I, actually, I don't even know anything about no Dragon Ball Z. I just know this cat's a herd. 888-729-3776. It is our telephone number. See the phone. Talk to Tyler in Ohio. Tyler, thanks for calling the right time. Thanks for taking my call, Bo. Yes, sir. Got a, uh, got a quick little analogy about Willie Taggart's career arc here. See if you agree with it. Job one, Western Kentucky. It's like your first serious girlfriend in high school, usually like your sophomore year. Jobs two and three, South Florida and Oregon. Junior, senior year, 
high school freshmen, so they're kind of like, you know, they're kind of like the uh, not so serious but more fun relationships. Then all of a sudden, boom, Florida State, job four. That's the hot sorority girl you date seriously as a junior and senior. Throw that ring on it. All of a sudden, leads to a messy divorce here in about five years because you start messing with the Cleveland Browns, the side chick. <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, you think, oh, man, things so much better with the side chick. Got to get up out of wife number one. You leave her as soon as the divorce is final. Side chick turns out to be crazy. You leave her. Now you got a case of herpes. So you go to job five, which is my prediction, UCF, when it becomes vacant. Again, it's like a second wife, close enough to wife number one, just to remind you how good you used to have it. Now you've settled down. I'll hear your thoughts, you both. Got to be honest. I'm Tyler, I appreciate the call. I kind of stopped listening when you mentioned that one thing. Like at that moment, it became very difficult for it was a collective. What did he just say? Moment. I looked at Shannon. Shannon looked at me. Did he say? Did he say what? He, did you hear what he said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He what said what we what we thought he said. He yes. said what we thought. He said what we. Yeah, nobody else heard it though. Okay. Yeah, there's a lot going on there. Uh, eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. That's our telephone number. Crazy thought though. By the way, Shannon realized this. Third time Florida State's had a coach in forty three years. Now part of that, of course, is because Bobby Bowden was there for a million of them. But Jimbo kept that job for what eight years. Hey, Jimbo kept that job. I mean, he stuck around in that job for a while, long enough to get it done, long enough to have a full arc for him. Taggart has a retirement job. Like, maybe he has NFL aspirations, but this is a retirement job. This is one you stay in till the end. You're not, he's highly unlikely to get a better job than this one. Yeah, the last guy who had this job just left somewhere, but he took a step down. He just needed a change. And here's all you need to know about the state of college football in Florida. Mark Richt, who was hired two years ago at Miami, is now the longest tenured head coach among the seven SBS teams in the state of Florida. Really? Everybody's tur- – I guess, yeah, McElwain just got turned over. Scott Frost just got turned over. Charlie just got there. Butch Davis just got there. Lane Kiffin just got there. Is that everybody? Oh, and Willie Taggart. Wow. Ain't that something. But, man, the arms race on that is wild because here's the thing that people don't understand about these other Florida schools. Like, Florida State is whatever it is. Do you know how many students Central Florida has? Shannon, did you know Central Florida is the second largest city, a school in America by population? Like, only behind Arizona State? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. All those schools are giant because Florida had this population boom, but they didn't have colleges, right? So, like, USF is, I forget how many tens of thousands of people. Um, FIU is a zillion people that goes there. Like, these schools are huge and they're starting to get alumni bases that want to have their own stuff. And what that means is it's about to get real in the field. Straight Talk Wireless, nationwide coverage on America's largest and most dependable 4G LTE networks. All right, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number coming up next. How happy is Steve Offer right now that LiAngelo and LeVar Ball are gone? We'll ask Jeff Goodman of ESPN or ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. Book your next business trip at Upside.com, and you'll get two of the best gifts anyone will give you this holiday season. A free pair of Bose SoundLink wireless headphones so you can have some peace and quiet on your business trip and the gift of a better business travel experience. All that plus Upside is great prices for flights, hotel, and rental cars. Now to get your free pair of Bose SoundLink wireless headphones, use my code Bomani when you book your first business trip at Upside.com. That's code Bomani at Upside.com to claim my free gift to you. Bose SoundLink wireless headphones. Upside.com. You deserve a better business trip. Headphones available while supplies last. Must be a first Upside purchase. $600 minimum purchase required see cipher complete details the right time with bomani jones hey gentlemen welcome back to the right time my name is bomani jones thanks for listening on espn radio and the espn app all guests join us on the shell Penzo performance line just like our next guest he covers college basketball for us here at espn his name is jeff goodman all right jeff so lavar ball has pulled leangelo out of ucla at what point did we do we know at what point he decided that he was going to do this Oh, I think he just did it, like, spur of the moment. You know, like, calls me yesterday afternoon. I think he probably woke up yesterday morning saying, like, all right, enough is enough. I'm done. I'm done. We're pulling him out. I'm not even sure LiAngelo even knew he was pulling him out. Probably just, you know, pulled him out and called LiAngelo and said, all right, you're done. Come home. Come back to Tino Hills, and we're going to figure out what you're going to do next. But the crazy part is, like, okay, I'm not shocked that this happened. If you had told me before the year um, that LeVar is going to pull – Leangelo out December 4th or whatever it was. I would have said, no, no, I get it. Just how it happened that surprised me. The shoplifting, uh, the suspension. I thought it would be 
due to a lack of playing time and unrealistic expectations. Because LeVar told me before the season, actually told me last April, that he felt like uh, Leangelo would average 25 points a game. And uh, as I said all along, I think he'll be, he would have been lucky to average you know 10 minutes a game this year. All right, Donnie, Jeff Goodman of ESPN here on the right time. Now, LeVar said that there was what something like a two- to three-month suspension and that their meal cards had been cut off. Do we know how much of that is true? Yeah. He told me the same thing yesterday. He said meal card taken away, couldn't practice, couldn't work out. You know, I think a big part of it, it wasn't a meal card. It was more the fact that uh, he couldn't work out and get better with the team. And, and Lavar's listen, the one thing you know with him is what does he want? He wants his kids to get better and be able to play all the time. And I think he felt like Leangelo wasn't able to really play other than, I don't know, going down to the rec center or going out to the outdoor court. Uh, he couldn't really get better. So why not just have him back in, in Chino Hills for the time being till they find out where he will go to make money playing basketball professionally, which is going to be the next step. Now, that you have talked about this, you said that briefly that you thought that Leangelo had been lucky to get 10 minutes a game here. But what do you think the ceiling yeah. is for him as a basketball player? I mean, he averaged 35. A g- so it's funny, Bomani. Everybody who's talking right now about, well, NBA guys saying that, that he's this or that or isn't good enough. Just so you know, no NBA player, I believe, has ever seen Leangelo play in person. None. Zero. Now, again, they're right when they're telling people, his sources, that he's not an NBA player. I mean, I've seen this kid play 20 times. You talk to anybody else who's seen him play, they'll tell you the same thing. Like, he can shoot it. He's big, he's strong, he can shoot it. He can't guard, he can't put it on the floor. Uh, I think his ceiling, I think he could be a good overseas player. I think he could, in time, could be a good overseas player. I think he's coachable. He's got a very similar personality as Lonzo. Not a lot of emotion, but will we'll take coaching well. Yes, sir. No, sir. Uh, that's why it surprised me, to be honest. The shoplifting overseas kind of surprised me because, again, he, he, from being around him enough, he's very quiet, unassuming, doesn't want attention, a lot of the same characteristics that, that Lonzo has as a kid. All right, Don, the Jeff Goodman of ESPN here on the right time. Now, is this a win for Steve Alford, getting La- getting LeVar and Leangelo out of his hair? Hell yeah, no doubt. Steve Alford, uh, as I've said, probably had the best night of sleep uh, that he's had in months last night. And uh, he, he gets to wash his hands with the – and it's, it's twofold, right? All right, so he doesn't have to worry about Leangelo, who is going to be a, a role player. Uh, but – he also likely Lamelo's done, and he won't ever play at UCLA, according to my sources. Uh, it, it highly unlikely. And what what that enables them to do now is recruit with a clean slate, because a lot of kids you're trying to recruit them, and they know Lamelo's coming. They know Lamelo's going to have the ball in his hands a lot. It's going to be the Lamelo show because he's not like Lonzo. He's the opposite. He wants to jack. He wants to shoot. Lonzo just wanted to make people better. Uh, So I think this will help UCLA turn the page on the ball family, Um, despite the fact that, again, Lonzo did so much for that program. I mean, think of what he put UCLA on the map, and he saved Steve Alford's job to some degree. Now, what about these other kids that uh, got suspended who are a little bit more highly regarded (laughs) than Leangelo? How much do you – right, right, right. right. Who, what? Uh, How much does it hurt UCLA to not have them? Cody Riley could help them. He's like a 6'8", six, 6'9", six, big, strong four-man. So he would play because physically he could play today. Jalen Hill, you know, a lot of people feel like – I haven't seen him a ton, Bomani, but, but the word that I've gotten is he's probably not quite good enough uh, to play at UCLA, especially right now. Could be a decent player down the road. But Cody Riley could help. So, you know, the question now becomes uh, letting the process play out, and it's not Steve Olford's decision. It's a university decision what they end up doing with these two kids. And uh, do they get reinstated? Do they get suspended for the year? Do they transfer somewhere else at the break? That's another option. So uh, I think we'll see here. We'll probably hear something in the next probably two weeks, I would assume. All right, we're talking to Jeff Goodman of ESPN here on The Right Time. Now, for LeVar, what do you think the end game is for this? Is this just really just to get these kids in the best position to play ball? Yeah, I mean, the, the end game is have them all three in the Lakers organization. Clear. Like, that is that is clearly the end game for him is having all three. I think even for one game, all three on the court together for the Lakers. I mean, imagine LeVar 
after that game, what he would be like. And again, Lonzo's done it. Uh, Mello, you know, the jury's out. I mean, he's talented. He is talented, but he's still got a long way to go. Um, you know, Jello, the middle one here, he, he's, you know, can they leverage it with Magic Johnson to put him on the G League team for now? Can Does LeVar have enough juice and enough leverage, and does Magic just not care and would say, hey, you know what? Yeah, I'll throw him on the G League team to keep LeVar happy and keep Lonzo happy. Put him in as a 13th man. All right, Dr. Jeff Goodman of ESPN here on the right time. While I got you, I want to talk a little bit about college basketball. I have not watched that much. I watched Marvin Bagley play the other night, though. <sighs> Who's supposed to guard him? Oh, my God. And, and everybody – so I'm at the Celtics game last night, and a couple fans asked me, they're like, who does Bagley compare to? And I'm like, I don't know because he's, he's a four-man, but he's, he's super athletic and strong and plays hard, and he's not the most skilled dude in the world. The, the name that I, I think somebody else came up with, it might have been Mike DeCourse, he threw it out there. He's similar in his skill set to James Worthy. You know, really athletic. Uh, again, Worthy played hard, uh, high-flying, like Bagley, tough, not the most skilled guy. Uh, I think they're, they're similar in a lot of their characteristics, but Bagley's bigger. Bagley's 6'10", 240. And high school kids were supposed to guard him this year. No, imagine that. I mean, seriously. And here's the craziest thing, Bamani. Do you know what his team was last year on the on the on the, a, on the AU circuit, the EYBL Nike circuit? Take a guess what his team's record was. I mean, I would I would think something in O. Two and fourteen. Wow. How about that? They they were horrible. They had to actually the the Peach Jam put them in, even though they they didn't earn a spot just because he's Marvin Bagley. So they're like, all right, we're gonna, you can go O and forty. We're going to put you in and your team in. That's what they did. They just gave him like a, here you go, like a pity, you're in just because we want you in. But he lost a lot. And I was talking to his dad about that, who's from Durham, North Carolina, by the way. And he said he thinks that helped Marvin now. That taste of losing he had in his mouth uh, has really kind of uh, gotten him more focused and, and, and really helped him so far at Duke. But he, he's been the maybe the best player in the country. Uh, another guy that, that nobody's talked about, Trey Young, a freshman in Oklahoma. You got to watch him, buddy. Got to watch this kid. Hey, man, He's like six one, unlimited range. Like, like I'm not comparing him to Steph Curry, but he could shoot it from 35, no problem. He's averaging 29 points and about nine assists. And that's the one we're going to check. Now that is Jeff Goodman. Check him out covering basketball on all levels for us here at ESPN. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. Anytime, man. I'll talk to you soon. All right, man. You be good. ESPN Radio is presented by Progressive Insurance. Customers who switch to Progressive save an average of $500. Call or click today and find out if we can save you hundreds on your car insurance. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Pencil Performance Line. Thanks to Jeff Goodman of ESPN for joining us last segment. Dan Graziano of ESPN will join us in the 5 o'clock Eastern hour. Remember, if you miss anything live, check out the Right Time podcast available on the ESPN app. Tune in tonight for a college basketball doubleheader as Villanova battles Gonzaga and Syracuse takes on UConn in the Jimmy B Classic. Coverage begins at 630 Eastern on ESPN Radio, ESPNradio.com, and the ESPN app. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. We got caught up in the whole Dragon Ball Z Street Fighter thing. I don't even know if it's a real competition, but I feel like it tells you who you are if you think whichever one you think of. Either way, what's the poll question, Shannon? Make it plain and simple. Street Fighter 2 or Dragon Ball Z? Boom. There you go. ESPN Radio Twitter account. There you go. Give your answer. Now, by the way, we also had somebody hit us up, and he asked us, one quarter in your pocket, $1,000 if you win, what Street Fighter 2 character are you taking? I say I am probably going with the homie Ryu, either Ryu or Ken, because they got three moves. You know what I'm saying? Ain't that many cats got three moves. They got three moves. Shannon, who you going with? Have the stipulations in place. So this is not championship edition, so we can't play with Bison, Sagat, Balrog, or Vega. So it's just the traditional characters, correct? Yes. All right. Although playing with Ken and Ryu were my Ryu. Oh, it's favorites. Ryu, what, it's Ryu real, in Texas. His real name is Ryu, but we call him Ryu. It's yes. Ryu everywhere. Although those were my favorites, if I have to win a tournament, I'm playing with Chun-Li. She ain't got the power, man. But she got the versatility, and if I need to beat Vega, she can jump off walls and she can move fast enough to beat Vega. I just can't do that. I just can't do that with Ken or Ryu. I guess there's something to that, man, but, I mean, because, all right, so, so Chun-Li had the fireball and upside-down kick, right? 
lightning bird kick, yes. Yeah, what helicopter, whatever it was. That's what she got, right? She got the, the upside down kick. I'm going to take that fireball, that dragon punch, and the whatever it was he said when he did that one. I, I can't remember, right? I, I know it's, we got the Hadouken and the Oryuken. I know their moves were essentially the same, but were, were you more of a, a Ryu guy or a Ken guy? I don't know how I decided I was a Ryu guy, but I decided I was Ryu. They, they, you just had to pick one. I was more of a Ken guy, believe it or not. Like, Although they had the same moves, Ken had some more flair to him. You he, know? Had that, like, he had the fresh red jersey. He did. He did. You know, he's fighting out there on the piers and the docks. He's getting it in. Yeah. That's right. Now, I'm still, I have Go Ryu, man. Go Ryu. Should we better make that name. a poll? He had a better name, Ken Masters. Come on now. That sounds Ryu? like a champion. What was Ryu's name? It's Ryu. <laughs> okay. There we go. We're just going to keep on calling here Ryu. <laughs> We're just going to keep on doing it. Uh, 888 That's our telephone number. Switching gears, Derwin James, probably a first-round pick at Florida State. He decided that he is not going to go to Florida State's bowl game. He is going to prepare for the NFL. And I know that all kinds of people have different levels of opinions when it comes to these cats and now skipping out on the bowl games and – I have a feeling that people's opinions of this will be swayed by the fact that Florida State was going to the Independence Bowl in Shreveport and wouldn't none of y'all want to go to that damn bowl either. What year was that, Shadow? Was it 2010 or 2011 when Dante Page, Boston, North Carolina, got sent home because he sent those tweets about how miserable he was in Shreveport? And now that means I have to take Durbin James off my list of Florida State players most likely to send angry tweets about being in Shreveport. Like, I think Durbin James is the first name that people have brought up, but I was like, man, Durbin James ain't going to that game. Under no circumstances, is Derry James even bothering to show up to Shreveport. Once he looked up and saw that was what it was, we're going, where? No, we ain't going. Y'all can go to Shreveport. But for what? Can you imagine how horrible it would be to be Derwin James if you were laying on the field and you blew out your knee and your whole career flashed before your eyes before it even started? Except it's not just flashing before your eyes. It's flashing before your eyes in Shreveport. This too, in reference to James, you know, he's coming off a torn meniscus from last year. That's right. From last season. So he's in no position here to risk that playing in the game on a team that went 6-6 six and six in he Shreveport. Is, he is the rarest prospect, by the way, right? A dude that, well, if it doesn't work out for you being like a free safety type, maybe you could be a middle linebacker. Like, those are the things that people say about Derwin James. Like, that's how cold he is. Nah, man, we ain't about to. No, nah, it ain't about to end. It's not going to end for me here. But what, but what about that whole discussion of these players are sitting out the bowl games and they're letting their teammates down? Yeah, let me tell you, their teammates need to find a way to not go to Shreveport neither. In fact, I feel like Derwin James is being an inspiration to his teammates right now. I wouldn't care if I was going to, a, uh, to the NFL or not. I'm just not going to Shreveport. Just not happening. No, sir, Rebob. I'm good on that. And, oh, buddy, Shannon, the responses are coming in hot and heavy about this uh, Street Fighter 2. As somebody said, don't forget Doll Seam. And I ain't never met anybody that used Doll Seam. Too Ch- slow. Too slow, man. Too too vulnerable. Too and Chun Lee is Mike Tyson compared to uh, Doll Seam and them little rubber band taps that he's out here giving you. There's one dude saying he's taking Blanca, and that tells me one thing about him. He's a dude that just sits there over in his little corner, and all he does is hit the button real fast and try to light up. That that's that's his whole groove. He also occasionally uses E Honda and all he does is that hand thingy. That's all he got. He he's like, Yeah, you just gonna come over here in this electricity. That's all you gonna do. Those are the cats. Those are the most annoying dudes in the world too. They not even trying. They not putting any effort. A lot of team Ryu, by the way. A lot of team Ryu. Somebody said something about Chun Li and the lightning kick, except I'm looking at this, Shannon. This looks like one of these newfangled street fighters. I don't I don't know this era. She did have a, a a maneuver similar to Honda when you just press the button in her. Oh, that's right! I forgot about yeah. that. Yeah. She, and, and then she had to fight. Okay, so she had three moves, right? She had the lightning kick, she had the helicopter kick, and she had jump off walls too. Let's not forget that added a new uh, of the playable characters in the original Street Fighter Two that added a new development. That's right. Oh, and element. by the way, Shannon, yes, the dude who said that um, used all seam is also talking about using E Honda, and that tells me he is absolutely just hitting the button. That's all he's doing. He's just hitting the button. Uh, somebody hit me and said, what's wrong with Shreveport? To which I say, why don't you go? Why don't you, why don't you go check it out? Why don't you go let me know how it goes? I actually have Shreveport stories that I can't really tell you as of right now in this moment. Um, if you ever meet me in person, I would tell you, oh, Mike's on the line, but we ain't got enough time for Mike to do the Mike thing. We're going to let Mike come over on the other side of the break. Uh, I'm trying to think, did we did we miss anybody? The homie Guile. I like the homie Guile. You want about the Guile? He was slow as well in his maneuvers, unless he could set you up, set you up for the blade kick. Oh, there is that. All right, coming up next.
LiAngelo Ball is leaving UCLA. Let the jokes begin. Thanks for listening to the Right Time Podcast. Please come back tomorrow for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Guys, wouldn't your wife or girlfriend love it if you treated her to the very best this Christmas? Now you can with the world's softest pajamas by Pajamagram. Created by a team of pajama experts, the world's softest PJs are lighter than a cloud, softer than a bunny, like cashmere, only better. She'll love how heavenly they feel. Includes free gift packaging and Christmas delivery is guaranteed. So visit pajamagram.com or call 1-800-GIVE-PJs. Welcome to the Right Time Podcast. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. You can send us a tweet at the 1-800-Flowers.com Twitter feed. That is at Bomani underscore Jones. We've been really getting it cracking over here talking about Street Fighter. I barely even remember how we got to talking about Street Fighter. I already had to block somebody about this because this little young Dragon Ball Z generation. I ain't got no beef with your little Dragon Ball Z thing. I don't know nothing about it, man, but I just feel like it's, it's really popular among herbs. Anyway, um, we have a poll up that is asking you, Street Fighter 2 or Dragon Ball Z. Shannon, do we also have the poll up yet about what Street Fighter character that you're taking? If you got a quarter to win $1,000. Actually putting that one up there right now. I feel like I got almost one more that we should consider. What you got? Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat? I'm Team Mortal Kombat. I'm absolutely Team Mortal Kombat. Even though I may have been Team Mortal Kombat in large part because it was just so grisly and grew and grimy. You know what I mean? There's the blood all over the place with Mortal Kombat. Either way, check the ESPN Radio Twitter account at ESPN Radio. You can get on those things. In the meantime, uh... LiAngelo Ball is no longer going to UCLA. LeVar has pulled LiAngelo out of UCLA, although I don't feel like LeVar actually has the power to pull the kid out. If the kid decided he was going to go, he had to go, although I don't see myself as being the one telling my daddy no if my daddy is LeVar Ball. Anyway, this has happened, and as a result, we wound up with LeVar and LiAngelo. They went on the Today Show. LeVar went on CNN again with your homie Cromo. Um, anyway, one thing I thought was interesting about this is here is LiAngelo Ball explaining just how the shoplifting thing went. We all went out one night, uh, went through the malls, went to a Louis Vuitton store. People started taking stuff, and then, you know, me just not thinking and being with them, I took something too. And we left thinking we'd just get away. You know how kids think. I didn't realize till I got back to my hotel. I'm like, that was stupid, but by then it was too late. And then sure enough, the next morning the, the police came and got us. We were in jail for a day and a half or something like that. What was that like? Oh, it was horrible. They take your clothes, you wear them, um, like whatever they have for you, a little jumpsuit or whatever, take your shoestrings, and then you just sit in a cement cell for however long. It's just you and then all the officers, and they don't speak English. And they don't speak English, which, I mean, I think is a fairly obvious thing. That being said, can you imagine being in a jail where nobody speaks English? These cats trying to ask you what you in for, and you can't even give them a satisfactory answer? Right? Like, just imagine that. Because one thing about it is I imagine that our Chinese brothers really ain't no better than us in those circumstances, where you get a call with somebody here where they don't speak no English, and you get frustrated with them, and all you do is start speaking English to them harder, as if that's all of a sudden going to make the point. These cats just sitting there in the bing for a day and a half, and then they got out. Now, uh, we have LeVar Ball here, and one thing LeVar said about this, and I actually think that LeVar makes some halfway decent points about this. One is that he thinks that they had this indefinite suspension, and he feels like that's gone on long enough. China already forgave the boys, and they returned it. I mean, why else are we still manhandling them as far as keeping them from playing sports, taking their meal passes, taking their stuff where they can't practice in the facility? I mean, come on. They already apologized. They already did all that. So what are we holding on to to make a point for what? They've already been forgiven over there. So what's the big deal? So I'm saying is let's get back over here and start their lives back. I think they had enough. I think he's right. By the way, like, you know, that's how LeVar went on CNN. That's in LeVar on CNN with Cromo. And the reason I think LeVar is right on this one is when he said the thing about cutting off their meal cards, what exactly, like, what is UCLA trying to accomplish 
on that one. Like, I don't know the backgrounds of those other kids. Like, I imagine that Leangelo was able to get his grub on just fine under those circumstances. But if you were dealing with a kid who came up and didn't have no cash, because I think a lot of us forget not everybody can call their parents and ask for money while they're in college. How are you going to take, like, what's the point of taking away the meal pass? That, I feel like, is a level of punishment that is going way too far and is unnecessary and doesn't do anything to drive home the point. Like, if your thing is that you want to make sure that they've learned their lesson, I honestly believe a day and a half in a Chinese jail is the lesson learner. I don't think there's that much more that you need than the day and a half on in, in, in the Chinese jail in order to learn your lesson. But can a, any single one of you explain to me what is accomplished by making it to where these cats don't have their meal cards on? Like, if their meal cards are still off as of right now, I have a feeling a whole lot of your parents will pull you out of school, too, under those same circumstances, especially if you went there to play basketball and you're not going to be able to play basketball from there. Now, this is a part where I think LeVar was tripping. LeVar's looking at the coaches like, what about y'all? It's been long enough punishment. Says who? I mean, we got a whole look, – look at these. These coaches is making a grip of money. We got to be mindful now that they, they could be under this too on the fact that they got to hold a little accountability. Now, the accountability part there, LeVar also said in that interview that he felt like that the boys should have been chaperoned, and I think that's ridiculous. They should have been allowed to roam through China as they saw fit. They are adults, at least in a technical sense. And no, I do not think it was UCLA's responsibility to have somebody walking around with those dudes through the mall to make sure they didn't steal nothing. No, I think that that's silly. I think that he's off on that one. Simple as that. That part, I think he's off. But again, I agree. The punishment that UCLA is still laying down, the way LeVar tells it, the suspension is like two to three months that they're talking about having. So LeVar looks at it and is like, look, that's the whole season. What's the point of doing this if that's going to be the whole season, right? Like, why are we here? What is the point of doing that? So I get them all day long on that. I'm actually I'm more surprised that the entirety of the discussion that has been generated around this is about LeVar pulling the pulling Leangelo out of school rather than why are you taking meals away? Like, really, why are you taking meals away? That's the one that would be my question. In fact, LeVar feels like UCLA going harder than the China was. OK, over there in China, they dropped the charges. Lucky for you. OK, I think the boys are learning their lesson. Yes, they learned their lesson. I'm always lucky, so that's okay. But they learned their lesson, and now it's a harsher treatment over here. So my problem with Cromo, if you watch that interview with Cromo, Cromo is going to a place that always bothers me in these sorts of things, where Cromo wants LeVar and LiAngelo to explain how grateful they are. At every turn, how grateful they are. And once people sit over here and brag about the American way and the American way of life and then try to act like it would have been okay to be subjected to a ridiculous punishment at the hands of the Chinese government. And you're right. Like all of this is a, hey, man, be sure to say thank you. Be sure to say thank you. And I don't blame LeVar for being like, nah, it ain't going to be that. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Hit the phone. Talk to our man, Trevor Price. Trevor, what's going on, man? What's going on, my man? Uh, I'm, I'm on the way my son's wrestling, and I'm listening to you. And let me tell you, I, I, I don't know a lot about basketball because I was never a good basketball player. As tall as I was in high school, I never played basketball. But I do know an athlete when I see one, and I do know a bad basketball player when I see one. <laughs> that kid is not a bad. That kid's not a basketball player. Let's just be honest. The middle one is that the odd middle kid is not a basketball player. But what he is is six foot five, two hundred and thirty pounds of athletic. He's an NFL tight end. I think I think Levar is wasting his time with that. If you want to change the game, Mr. Ball, you make some big baller brand, brand cleats. After your kid goes to, you know, a small Division One school and learns how to play football, put him at Towson University. Put him at Oklahoma State. Any school will let him walk on. They'd probably give him a scholarship because when you are that big and you can run up and down a basketball court, basketball players and tennis players are the most athletic people I've ever seen um, uh, all around. They can stop. They can cut. They can jump. They can move. And if he's halfway decent at any of that, he will be a great tight end. I played against the New the, the New England Patriots. Do things a little differently. One of the best offensive linemen I've ever played against. Never played football in college. His name was Stephen Neal, and he was a, a college wrestler. And Bill Belichick said, "Look, I can teach you how to play football. I can't teach you to be big and strong." You know what I mean? So I I I think forget all the punishments and all that stuff. We you can argue that until the cows come home. But the kid's not a basketball player. He's just not. But Trevor, man, they be hitting in football. That's a big difference. <laughs> That's so I've been told. 
I'm just so saying. Like, I watched Jimmy Graham play basketball in college, and he was not a good basketball player, and he is a great football player, and he'd be out there every day looking like, man, but they'd be hitting out here. But let me tell you something. My next-door neighbor, right, my next-door neighbor, his uncle was a ref, and he used to ref the Miami games. And he said that Jimmy Graham used to be in the, on, the, on the basketball court from Miami just throwing people on the ground. And, and, and my homeboy's uncle was like, what are you doing out here? What, you can't play basketball. Why? What are you doing out here? you just throwing people on the ground. We're, we're calling technical fouls. You're fouling out in 15 minutes. You need to go play football. And it worked out. I think the kid, the kid might not be tough, but you know what? Go put him at, go, go put him at University of Oklahoma. He'll get tough real fast. Hey, but, man. You know, we, Today's NFL is not about tough, especially a tight end position. If you can run, if you can catch, which I know the kid can do, he can't shoot and he can't play basketball. Have you ever seen a highlight of this kid playing basketball? I haven't. No, Have no you? one has. No one has. He's the <laughs> other one. <laughs> You've never seen a highlight of me playing basketball. There's a reason <laughs> for that. <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, I, I've, I've always thought that. I don't know these people. I don't know their family. But one of them scored 96 points in a high school game. The other one's playing for the Lakers. Well, what's this one doing? <laughs> Getting kicked out of UCLA. <laughs> right? hey, man. Put him on a football field. Put a helmet on him. See what happens. Dude. Didn't LeVar Ball play football for the um, – He did. did it, the, the dad play. Yeah. The, 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 why, why are you trying to make this kid a square peg into a round hole? Hey, man, you might be right with the pro bowler. Once again, it's a pity. We're going to take it, man. Trevor, I appreciate the call. All right, 888-729-3776. That's the telephone number. Coming up next, we're going to talk to Mike Hitman and, ooh, college football coach Smack Talk. We love that on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Series XM Channel 80. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. We are presented by Progressive Insurance. Dan Graziano of ESPN will join us next segment. Dan Graziano will join us at 530 Eastern. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. We talk about everything. We talk about LeVar and LiAngelo and LiAngelo getting pulled out of school. We really been talking about video games and the like. Shannon, Dragon Ball Z, even a video game? I thought it was just a cartoon. A video game adaptations, but, yeah, it started as uh... – as a cartoon, yeah. Uh, okay, just check it. So you can go on ESPN Radio's Twitter account, at ESPN Radio, which you got Street Fighter 2 or Mortal Kombat, which you got Street Fighter 2, Dragon Ball Z, and if you got $1,000 on the line, what Street Fighter character are you going to fight with? We got everything for you. Anyway, let's hit the falls. DJ Mike Hitman, what's going on? Mo, I only going to fight with one, one man, Scorpio. S- Scorpio was dope. Now, he's a, he was a man from hell. And he would give you a hard time. I'm telling you, you can't, you can't never see his face. You don't know if he's hurt or blind or what. Scorpio is the man. Hold on, hey, Mike. You, hold on, Mike. You in the arcade player Mortal Kombat? Hey, you both. Did I beat? Did I beat? Did I beat your boy in basketball and football? I'm you a did. video, but I'm a video fanatic. Bring it on. I got the Xbox One X. Come on with it. We need to get some people online playing against you, Mike. They don't want to play against me, both because they're crap. That's Corey Urban. You did beat Corey that one time. Did Corey beat you, though? He only beat me in Boston. That's only because that ain't Boston is an old man sport. But football and basketball, I beat them down. <laughs> yes, indeed. Hey, Bo, Bo, let me say this. I can save the NBA legend game. Hit me out. I know ESPN going to write this down. They might copy it, and I'm going to be a genius. Let's get rid of that no comedian, no talent, Kevin Hart, for one. Get rid of him. How about bring Alonzo Ball party in there and his brand of basketball? You might get Charles Barkley might want to play. Or you might get Michael Jordan might have come out on the court. What you think about that, Bo? You got Alonzo Father in there. In there. He can market his gym shoes. He said he could play ball. And it's a legend game. Maybe some legend might come out and want to play in the NBA game against this guy. What a market genius that would be for ESPN on ABC. Well, what do you think about that? I have to say, Mike, I absolutely love this idea. Just have LeVar out there and get Michael Jordan around and have LeVar say something crazy to Mike. The next thing you know, Mike going to rip off them big old jeans and have some shorts on underneath it and then hoop yes. up LeVar Ball. And Charles Barkley will actually come out there too, Bo. Bo, this would be a this would is this, is this father listen to this? You can, you can market your gym shoe, you can bring him on the court, and you can bring yourself on the court. And it's only the 11 game. You can take Kevin Hart, who can't play no way, 
and, you, and take his roster spot. There you go, ball. Have a good one. All right, Mike. Although I'd have to say, I don't, I don't think that's enough to get Charles Barkley to play basketball. I don't know what it would take to get Charles Barkley out there working up a sweat. Shannon, what do you think it would take to get Charles Barkley out there to play? More than that anyone is available to. But right, I, do like, have, I do have a question for you, Bo. Do you still think Michael Jordan wears his basketball shorts under his jeans to this day, like right now? It wouldn't shock me because he's always ready. Michael Jordan is always ready for somebody to say something to him. Always ready for somebody to say something to him. Somebody named D. Shannon got in the missions and said, that old fool got the games mixed up. How much would you pay to see that dude called Mike Hit Bad, an old fool in his face? Hey, good luck with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I say, Mike, hey, Mike, don't roll alone. Them cats around Mike. Well, Darnell's got a smile on his face. Good game does not. Hey, subscribe right now to 30 for 30 podcast and the listen tab of the ESPN app or Apple podcast brought to you by ZipRecruiter. The smartest way to hire. Try it for free by going to ZipRecruiter.com slash 30. All right, 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. We talked about this a little bit yesterday, but this is great. We don't have enough coach beef. Like Spurrier was the greatest ever. At, well, Shannon, was Spurrier, it was coach beef. It was school beef. It was just whatever kind of beef he could generate. They asked him once when he coached at Florida against Georgia if they had a chance to win it. He's like, does Ray Goff still coach over there? And that was like that was his question. That was it. Was that you can't spell citrus? Can't spell citrus without UT. Uh, when the library burned down at Auburn, and he said it was a shame because half the books hadn't even been colored. J.A. tells a great story once at one of the, I think it was the Fiesta Bowl, in um, 95 when they got uh, smoked by Nebraska, and they'd ask him about the Tampa Bay job was coming open then. They asked if he was going to take that, and he's like, no, nope. I don't know why, but my name tends to come up in these rumors. I don't know why some coaches' names come up and some others don't. And then he goes out of nowhere and says, why does Phil Fulmer's name never come up in these rumors? Like, he's the best at that. But we don't get it too much no more, not till Lane Kiffin gets a real job. Like, when Lane Kiffin gets one of those jobs, we're going to get it back. Anyway, um... Mark D'Antoni oh, said something about how his team focuses on beating Michigan. Jim Harbaugh got on the Twitter and said, Coach D comments on continuing to focus on how he can beat Michigan. Congrats on turning around a 3-9 and team plagued with off-the-field issues. Good for the Big Ten to have him back. Ooh, Shannon, I found that to be a bit harsh. Well, we won in our rivalries, right? Well, I guess Michigan State considers Michigan a rival. Yeah, hold on, Shannon. Mike wants to come back. Mike, what you got, man? Oh, you hung up? Damn. I don't know. That makes me wonder what happened in Mike's life. He normally doesn't hang up. He normally stays on the phone, and we get to hear whatever madness is going on in his world. But I do love that Jim Harbaugh is always ready to start this. The problem Jim Harbaugh's got is they don't do a good enough job of beating rivals. He's actually, I think he's done a very good job in Michigan. He does not do a good enough job of beating rivals. Oh, here we go. Mike called, and he wants us to give that guy his telephone number. Mike, you're going to have to call in and do it because I feel like my bosses will get mad at me if I say your phone number, even though I know that you want your phone number out there. You will have to call and give that dude your phone number yourself so he can call you. Hey, D, if you are here, Mike will give you his phone number. Go ahead. In fact, hit him up at DJ Mike Hitman 21 on Twitter, D. Um, Mike say he want to holler at you. He means it, by the way. Every single word, he means it. That's what we need, Shannon. We need Mike Hitman on somebody's staff. You tell me Mike couldn't recruit. Recruit who? He could recruit. Problem is Mike's recruiting technique would do a, involve a whole lot of hollering at your mama right there in front of you. But it'll be very, very charming. He will be very, very charming. All right, eight 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 seven two nine three seven seven six. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, just how dysfunctional have the Giants become? We'll talk to Dan Graziano of ESPN on ESPN Radio, the ESPN app, Sirius XM Channel 80. Hey, if you book travel for work, listen up. Book your next business trip at Upside.com, and I'll give you two of the best gifts anyone will give you this holiday season, a free pair of SoundLink wireless headphones so you can have some peace of quiet on your business trip and the gift of a better business travel experience. Only Upside monitors your business trip around the clock, proactively keeping you posted on everything from the weather in the city you're going to to changing your flight home so you can adjust your meeting schedule. Have you ever experienced that level of service before on a business trip? Nope. 
All that plus upside is great prices on flights, hotel, and rental cars. Now to get your free pair of Bose SoundLink wireless headphones, use my code BOMANI when you book your first trip at Upside.com. That's code BOMANI at Upside.com to claim my free gift to you. Bose SoundLink wireless headphones. Upside.com. You deserve a better business trip. Headphones available while supplies last. Must be first Upside purchase. $600 minimum purchase required. See site for complete details. The right time with Bomani Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the right time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Penzo Performance Line. Just like our next guest, he covers the NFL for us here at ESPN. His name is Dan Graziano. Now, Dan, this is the first time we've talked to you since Ben McAdoo got fired. Is the Giants' situation, or was it as dysfunctional as it appeared to be from the outside? Yeah, I mean, when you fire the GM and the coach with a quarter of the season left, uh, something's gone terribly wrong. Uh, that's not breaking any news there, I don't think. But I, I think what what we see here is you heard John Mara reference. You know, they have three home games left. I just think he didn't want to. He didn't want to be sitting there with like you know banners flying overhead and people putting up billboards saying fire this guy, fire that guy. And there was a report that. Some former Giants would show up in Eli Manning jerseys. and I just felt like there's so much negativity around the team. If they had already decided, as they say they had, to move on from these guys at the end of the year, then the idea of playing three more home games with them running the show just kind of became unpalatable. So that plus I think they wanted to get a start on the um, you know, the GM interviews. That There's some guys out there that, that are uh, not attached to teams that they could interview right now, and I imagine you'll start to see them do that. Well, now that they have broken Eli Manning's starting streak, was there any point yeah. in putting him back into the lineup? Well, again, if what you're after is um, soothing the anger of the fan base, then yes, right? I mean, if you're if you're out there, you know, we're gonna we're gonna still charge full price for our tickets and our parking and our concession items, so we owe you um, the players you like and our best effort to beat the Dallas Cowboys. So that's probably it. I think what's interesting is, you know, they mismanaged this, and not just the guys who got fired. Mara took responsibility for it too. He could have, he could have, he could have vetoed the whole Manning plan, and 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 Manning would have started last week. But um, if they're not, if they don't think that Davis Webb, their third round rookie, is ready to play quarterback for them, then I don't see what the point is of just putting Geno Smith in there. So. It seems to me I still think we'll probably see Davis Webb play for the Giants before the end of this year, but I just don't feel like they they think he's had enough practice to put him in there yet. So um, I think that plus trying to do right by the angry fans is probably the answer to your question. Now, given that they don't have any other answer on the roster at quarterback and we don't know what the draft is going to look like, do you think there's any chance that Eli Manning is a Giant in 2018? Yeah, I mean, there's a chance. Just too many unanswered questions, though, to know for sure, right? Who's going to be the GM? Who's going to be the coach? Do they draft a quarterback with what looks like it'll be a very high pick in the draft? You know, is the relationship between Eli and ownership damaged as a result of what went down last week? You know, I I think Eli's a pragmatic guy, and I think he he wants to play football, and he wants to play for the Giants, and and, uh, I don't think he would rule anything out at this point. If I were betting, I would say he probably plays elsewhere next year. But, you know, the question, is there any chance? Of course, I think there is a chance. And, again, we don't know who's going to be running the show and and how they'll all be feeling about each other uh, when the time comes to make those decisions in the spring. All right, Dr. Dan Graziano of ESPN here on The Right Time. Now, how much do you think Eli Manning has left? I, I see, I think that's a good question because – what happened is the people in the building kind of decided that he wasn't playing that well, right? The last couple of years. So the benching of Manning wasn't just only about seeing the other guys on the roster. It was sort of, you know, the offense isn't really working with him at quarterback. Now we all know they have other issues. Odell Beckham cert. A lot of other guys have been out, but um, you know, they, they felt like Eli wasn't really delivering at the level that they expect him to given his salary, given his history, given his pedigree. So um, it's been a while since we've seen him at his best. I still think based on how old, I mean, he's, he's 35, 36, like the quarterbacks can play another four or five years after that at a high level. Uh, we're seeing it with some of the guys around the league. So I would say he probably does have something left just given what we know about his age, his health and his work ethic. But um, it's been a while since we've seen it. And then the longer it goes without seeing one of those high level performances, the the the, the more, 
you start to wonder if maybe uh, maybe we have seen the best of him. All right, we're talking to Dan Graziano of ESPN here on the right time. Now, switching gears just a little bit, we saw three suspensions come down this week, Gronkowski, Juju Smith-Schuster, and also George Aloka. Were you surprised to see, though, that Smith-Schuster got suspended for his hit on Vontez Burfecht? No, uh, because it factored in the taunting, and I think there was such a there was such a bad vibe around that game that I think I, I think from just from talking to people at the league, like I, I think they would like. To, it sounds crazy to say it. I think they'd like to see more ejections. You know, I, I think there's a sense that if the if the officials, you know, could get control and, and maybe maybe throw a guy out for a, for an offense like that, then maybe things would settle down in the course of a game, and you wouldn't need to do suspensions the next day. But you know, that hit. And the taunting, which was the accepted penalty, that the taunting penalty is the one that counts toward the, oh, if you do it twice, you're automatically ejected. So it's the kind of action, that taunting, the kind of action that can lead to an ejection. Uh, that plus the violence of the hit. Um, and I also think, you know, fair play, if they're going to suspend Iloka for the hit in the end zone on Antonio Brown, then, then, um, then I, I think people would have wondered why Smith Schuster wasn't suspended for what he did. So yeah, we're going to keep seeing this. I mean, that clip you just played from Schefter in the break, coming out of the break, you know, the on-field stuff this time of year gets pretty intense and uh, emotions run high. And if these guys are going to keep hitting each other in the head and doing these excessively unnecessarily violent things to each other on the field of play, the NFL has to get control of it or else it's just going to feed into this perception of the league as, as too violent and too brutal. And that's a, that's a perception that they're really working to combat right now as much as they can. Well, also, if Juju got one game for that, was Rob Gronkowski lucky that he only got one? I guess. You know, the, the outrage over Gronkowski not getting more, I, I, I don't really get it. I mean, one-game suspension is a significant suspension in a 16-game NFL season. I understand the point which is that Gronkowski's was after the play. But, I mean, that doesn't make the, it doesn't make the, the human head or human brain any more or less vulnerable, whether the play whether the guy, whether the play has been blown dead or not. I, I think what Gronkowski did was lousy, and he deserves to be suspended for it. And, uh, you know, if we're going to split hairs, um, you know, maybe you could, you, could make, you could convince me that what he did was somehow worse or more egregious because it wasn't part of the game. But I just don't know that that's, that's – the, at the end of the day – I just don't feel like a one-game suspension is a slap on the wrist. And I think, you know, the effect it could have on Gronkowski is significant, not just one game worth of pay, but, you know, he has an incentive-based contract where millions of dollars are connected to playing time, 70% of the snaps, 80% of the snaps, 90% of the snaps. If if a one-game suspension prevents him from reaching one of those thresholds, it could be even more painful for him. So, yeah, I I think it's – I think this seems to be what's developing. We saw Danny Trevathan earlier in the year get a two-gamer, that was appealed down to one. So I think we're settling on this sort of one game suspension for these kind of in-game hits. If it doesn't work, if they continue to happen, then I imagine you will see it escalate. All right. Talk to Dan Graziano of ESPN here on the right time. Last question before we let you go. Have we reached a point yet for the Cowboys where they need to be worried about Dak Prescott? No, I mean, they got two more games without uh, Ezekiel Elliott, right? So they know he's coming back. They know he's healthy. They know he'll be good when he comes back. And I think the offense will look very good again once he's back there. Um, now, it, you can argue that it's, it's um, you know, they could be blamed for, for tying the offense to the idea of, oh, we have to have the best running back in the league. Uh, but that's what they did. And, and it looks like they're missing him, which they are. So I think Dak will be fine. I think, you know, he's a – He's a guy that he's surprised us before, and I wouldn't be surprised if he's the kind of guy who who, who deals well with and grows from adversity, and, and that, that down the line, the tough patch he's going through right now is beneficial to him somehow. He seems like that kind of guy to me, and I think once he has his group back around him, he'll look better, and um, you know, we got to remember, this is a second-year guy. You know, people go through ups and downs, you know? People expected Marcus Mariota and Jameis Winston to have big years this year, and they've had struggles, right? So the the the, the growth and progression isn't always uninterrupted, and I think um, what Dak's going through now is, is just sort of part of that, being a young player. All right, that's Dan Graziano. Check him out covering the NFL for us here at ESPN. Thanks so much, my man. I appreciate it. You got it. <clears throat>
During the hectic holidays, skip them all and visit 1-800-Flowers.com. Right now, 1-800-Flowers is offering a special 24 for 24 offer, 24 holiday lights, roses for just $24. To order now, go to 1-800-Flowers.com slash ESPN. The Right Time with Bomani Jones. Zen gentlemen, welcome back to The Right Time. My name is Bomani Jones. Thanks for listening on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. All guests join us on the Shell Pinzo Performance Live. Thanks to Dan Graziano of ESPN for joining us last segment. Chris Haynes of ESPN will join us next segment. Talk about Steph Curry and the Warriors. Steph hurt his ankle. That has to scare Warrior fans. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Uh, we got lots of polls up for y'all today. They're basically all about video games. Tell me if you about that Dragon Ball Z life or that Street Fighter life. If you about that Mortal Kombat life or that Street Fighter life. And if you had a quarter to win a thousand dollars what street fighter character is it that you are taking and shannon and i have found that apparently i made the dragon ball z people feel very defensive by calling them herbs and i don't know if they herbs all in their entirety of herbs that first dude who brought it up he was a herb and now i feel like everybody else feels like i'm calling them herbs and they don't realize that the harder they fight against me calling them herbs the more they look like herbs extremely defensive about this that's one thing i didn't anticipate i thought this was going to be a straight you know, Dragon Ball, who would you grow up liking more? A Dragon Ball Z guy or, or playing the Street Fighter 2 thing and everything that's around it? But people are really defensive, the Dragon Ball Z folks. You know who gets really defensive? You want to guess? Herbs. I mean, I mean I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying that you are necessarily a herb. I'm just saying that you are exhibiting herb-like qualities and trying to assert that you are not a herb, and that is what the French call hustling backwards. 888-729-3776. That is our telephone number. Oh, snap. We got the Heisman this weekend. Is that this weekend we got the Heisman? We got three Heisman finalists. We have Baker Mayfield, Bryce Love, and Lamar Jackson. Saquon Barkley did not get the invite. I do feel like JT Barry should have got a Lifetime Achievement Award for coming back. I mean, how many times has he been there? I guess he's been there six times already. It doesn't really matter when you've been there as many times as JT Barrett has been. JT Barry got there as a freshman, right? Wasn't he a Heisman finalist as a freshman? What was that like? 2011? It might be 03, 04, something like that. I got to go check way back. Oh, that's right. He was out there with Beanie and them. Forgot about that. He was out there with Beanie and them. Anyway, uh, we have ruined the Heisman over the years. The way that we have ruined the Heisman. Remember I talked about this before, how college football is best consumed as a regional sport. And people talk about we are ruining the conference championship with the playoff. But the conference championships only really matter to the people within the conference. The Heisman used to have some actual intrigue to it. But since we do Heisman trackers, I think Mike DeCourcy wrote something about this for the Sporting News not too long ago. That we pay so much attention to the Heisman that the actual Heisman night... There's no, it's anticlimactic. It is very rare that we go into the Heisman ceremony with any surprise over who the actual winner is. The last time I recall the Heisman being a real surprise or, or just having some mystery to it was when Sam Bradford won it in 2008 when I thought it could have gone to either he or Colt McCoy. Perhaps the most underrated great college quarterback of his time. Anyway, um, I thought that it could go in that direction, but we never have any mystery for it. So now we got Baker Mayfield, we got Lamar Jackson, and I bet Lamar Jackson gonna be up there salty looking at Baker Mayfield. Like, what he do I what do he do I don't do? Right, what 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 he got? Put me on that team and see what happens. Why don't you come over here and play with these cats? I'll be over here playing with and see how that goes. Lamar Jackson been every bit as cold this year as he was last year. Every bit as cold this year as he was last year. And what makes it interesting is people are in the process of talking themselves into Baker Mayfield as first-round pick, and they've spent the whole year talking themselves out of Lamar Jackson as first-round pick. And given all the things that we typically want out of quarterbacks, I don't really understand how it is that you are taking Baker Mayfield as a guy that you take in the first round and Lamar Jackson is somebody that you're coming up with these stories for. Baker Mayfield, though, I will say this. His arc as a quarterback and just his career how often does this happen? Well, first of all, the first part is it never happened before. He was the first walk-on to start at quarterback at an FBS school as a freshman. It had never happened before. Then he left Texas Tech. It wasn't so great with Kingsbury. And I think Davis Webb took his job, and then Davis Webb eventually wound up going to Cal. But Davis Webb got his job. He then transfers to Oklahoma, and he becomes Oklahoma legend. Like When you start thinking about Oklahoma quarterbacks non-wishbone, they ain't had one better than this. And all the time they've been around, they haven't had one better than this guy has been. And, look, he's fun to watch, and he's got all the jerk that makes him fun to watch because he, you know, does stuff like grab himself and all that, you know. Shannon, I feel like he's like, is he like Johnny Manziel with less personality? 
kind of what we needed, though, in college football because so much of college athletics are the coaches. So yes. to get a player that we can talk about week in and week out with it, the antics and the play on the field, I don't mind it. It's helped. It, I mean, there, there has been something to it. And, look, Oklahoma, so in, in the Stoops era, Oklahoma would basically do this, have like three or four great years and then a five-loss season. And every time the five-loss season would come around, I'd be like, oh, it looks like this thing is falling apart. And then they go on another run, and then they have like a five-loss season. Now they're in the middle of one of these runs. And, like, the team that went to the playoff a couple of years ago, I did not think was that good of a team. This team has an offense that is a monster, an absolute monster. And Baker Mayfield, by the way, the only Heisman Trophy finalist from a team in the college football playoff. Yeah, they've already put his name on the trophy. Please believe that. What can you are We in the playoff, y'all not. What you going to say? All right, 888-729-3776. That's our telephone number. Coming up next, what's up with your man, Kevin Durant? He really want to fight Boogie? We'll talk to Chris Haynes of ESPN on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app. Thanks for listening to the Right Time Podcast. Please come back tomorrow for more. And don't forget to listen to The Right Time with Bomani Jones from 4 p.m. to 7 Eastern on ESPN Radio and the ESPN app.